Hi, this is David Abanak Turtle with a comparison of two of the most popular methods for estimating conditional volatility. On the left, exponentially weighted moving average. On the right, Garch 1.1. On our YouTube channel, you can see a playlist called Volatility where you'll see previously I've detailed each of these calculations by using the historical time series. Because these topics are popular, I thought it'd be helpful to compare them side by side just in terms of their symbolic functions so that we can isolate on the essential difference. So I'd first note that both of them specialize or special cases of the arch M formula here. And this is quite general because this even generalizes from our very traditional or vanilla calculation for the estimate of volatility. What we have here is a variance estimate. So sigma is volatility, sigma squared is variance. For today, that estimate is a function of omega plus a summation of squared returns. Mu is return squared. Each of those squared returns getting a weight. And we have a series, a historical series, where m is the number of squared returns we have in the series. Now, if we think about a plain vanilla calculation of volatility, also called just a moving average, then this omega is zero, and the weights are all the same. In other words, if we had a series of 10, each of these alphas would be one-tenth, and the squared returns would each get an equal weight, and we would have the estimate of variance as simply the average squared return in the series. That's the vanilla volatility. What's the glaring problem with it? The problem is, if you think about a long series, yesterday's return is getting the same weight as the return at the beginning of the series, which is a long time ago, perhaps. So that's not as realistic. Both of the exponentially weighted moving average and Garch try to improve on that with these conditional estimates that give greater weight to more recent returns. So what I have here on the spreadsheet here in the top panel are parameters for both of the formulas. And on the bottom panel here are quantities in the actual time series. So imagine a stock here. So exponentially weighted moving average here in green, and here's the formula. Garch here, blue, and here's the formula. And so if we take a look at the historical series data that I need, Instead of showing you the calculation, I'm just going to assume that the last volatility was 2%, the most recent volatility. We also call it a lagged volatility. That means the lagged variance is the 2% squared of 0 0.0004. And then I'm going to assume yesterday's stock price is $20, today's is 22.1. That was deliberate so that when I calculate their daily log return, I get a round number of 10%. And I do that, as you probably know, by taking the natural log of today's price divided by yesterday's price. In this case, that's a continuously compounded or daily log return of 10%. So now I've got the information. I've got both the lagged volatility of 2% and the lag return of 10%. Now I'm going to apply exponentially weighted moving average. So I'll move that formula over here to make it closer. That's the one in green here. It has two terms. Starting here from the right, we've got lambda, which is the weight applied to the lag variance. And then because there's only two terms and because these are weights, the other weight needs to be 1 minus lambda. So I'm going to use a risk metrics weight here of 0.94, meaning my 1 minus lambda is 0 0.06. Those are my two weights. Notice they sum to 1. So now my estimate of variance under the exponentially weighted moving average, I can go right down here, and you can see I've named these cells to show, to demonstrate that I'm just implementing this formula. I've got 1 minus lambda, in this case that's my 6%, times the most recent squared return that's 10% squared, plus my lambda, in this case 0.94, times the most recent variance. That's right here. So the two terms, the summation of them, gives me my updated variance estimate. Because that's a variance, I only need to take the square root of it to get the updated volatility estimate of 3.12%. I'd also note 
this lambda is sometimes called a smoothing parameter or maybe better a persistence parameter so the greater this is the more persistent this series one way to think about that is if this were one then this would be zero and my estimate of today's variance would be the same as yesterday so the higher this is the greater the persistence this could be called the reaction parameter okay so now i'm going to move that exponentially weighted moving average over here underneath the garch to show how much they have in common and now the garch here's the big difference the garch adds an additional term so instead of two terms we have three this additional term is to incorporate mean reversion so that's the big difference exponentially weighted moving average does not mean revert garch mean reverts and handles that by this additional omega so now up here again in parameters, I've got a beta. Notice I'm going to use the same thing as lambda because my beta is analogous to my lambda. And then as an analog here to 1 minus lambda, I'm going to use alpha, but I need to parameterize that or specify that, so I'm going to, I'm going to use 0 0.03. So now I have two of my three weights, 0.94 and 0 0.03. That means my third weight needs to be what's left over. So in this case, 0.03. I have three terms in the garch. They need to sum to 1 for weights. Okay, so I've done that. I've got the parameters now, except the last thing I need to do is specify the long run volatility. Now this could also be, um, we could also figure this out with something like um, an MLE method, but I'm not showing that. I'm just going to use 2% here. So I'm assuming that the long run volatility for this series is 2%. So that the long run variance is the square of that. And then now notice something. This really, this can really trick people up. My omega here is not the long run variance itself. If it were, that we would be saying it gets a weight of one, and the other ones, then we have a problem. The omega here, as a term, is the product of the gamma weight times the long run variance. Although I did just have to change that from lambda to gamma to make that accurate. So my omega is gamma times the long run variance where gamma is the weight that's right here so that means in this case there's my omega and you can see it's the product of gamma which is one of the three weights and my long run variance which in this case is two percent squared so now i've handled the omega parameter and i'm ready to implement the garch one one and i do that right here it's omega product of gamma the weight times the long run variance plus my alpha in this case 0 0.03 times my most recent return squared 10% squared plus my beta 0.94 what we call persistence in the exponentially with moving average timed multiplied by my lagged variance which is 2% squared and I get oh I get this number and then if I take the square root of that, I get 2.62 under the garch. So here's my estimate. Here's my updated volatility estimate under exponential weighted moving average. Here's my updated garch estimate. And notice they are different. And the primary reason they're different is if we go back here and look at exponential weighted moving average, my last volatility was 2%, but I experienced a really abrupt shock here of 10%. So the exponentially weighted moving average, giving that some weight, sort of gets yanked up to 3.12. So see the virtue in that? We're incorporating that last innovation and adjusting. Now the Garch 1.1 also does that. It accounts for that last innovation, that abrupt shift up. So it jumps up from 2%. However, it's also experiencing, in this case, that it's pulling, getting pulled back down, that gravitational pull of the long run um, volatility which we have is two percent so that's pulling it back down and that's why this is lower than 3.12 here and it's that mean reversion that's the key difference here um, in between the garch 1 1 and the exponentially weighted moving average this is david harper the bionic turtle thanks for your time